Hello and welcome back. I'm gonna go ahead and apologize in advance. I'm also gonna move my monitor because I don't do anything properly anymore, apparently. God dang it, me. Hold on. There, that should do for now. Alright, I forgot to make a backup save of when our characters were not obscenely powerful, so I'm gonna apologize in advance for the mockery that we're going to make of the final bosses because... Although, no, we're not going to do all of the final bosses quite yet, probably. We might. It really depends on how long it takes, to be fair. But before we do that, Sid's counting on us. That's really all I wanted to do before that. No, I'm kidding. We're going to go do uh, Waka's Celestial. Now, half of Waka's Celestial, the sigil, requires you play Blitzball. Uh, it's a minimum, I believe of 25 games. I'm not going to be showing you that, obviously, because that takes a while, but you can abuse... Uh, you should probably Google this if you're going to do this, because I'm not going to explain it really at all. But you can abuse the reset data thing pretty much over and over to speed the process up to get the 25 games, otherwise it's going to take a lot more than 25. You need all of his overdrives and then the sigil will show up, and then you can get the sigil. Um, his other... I think it's in here. The other half of it, and if it's not in here, I'm gonna have to actually look it up. There we go. The other half of it is just in the Oryx locker room, and if you happen to have a different Blissful team, you can come back here if you want and recruit the original Oryx, but we don't need to. So we have the Sigil in the Crest now, but we don't have the weapon, you might notice. Do not worry. Hopefully I actually, I should. Hopefully I've met the requirements for getting the weapon because I did reset data so it might be possible that I don't meet the requirements because I'm a dingle dongle, but... The person who has your weapon is the bartender lady. I think it's a bartender lady. In the bar, of all places. It's kind of where bartenders hang out, I suppose. I won't, I won't do bartenders hang out in bars. They just chill. No, they work in bars, obviously, but whatever. You have to have uh, committed Waka to a certain number of battles and a certain number of Blitzball matches before this lady will give it to you, so if she doesn't give it to me, I will be moderately upset. But it's probably because of Blitzball. Excuse me. Hey there. The walker shows up. So apparently we did meet the requirements, but she she will not give it to you unless you've done a certain number of Blitzball matches and done a certain number of battles with Waka, so... So that's a good weapon, actually. One of the best. If you're going to be doing Dark Aeons, you need that. You also need the Kaladborg in the God Hand. And of course, any others that you see fit to get. Nirvana is a good one to have, although not necessary, because uh, if you're going to be using Aeons, they can break damage limit anyway, the ones you're going to be using, which would be Anima. And the Magic Sisters, of course. Uh, I don't know why I'm running all the way back this way, but I am. So bollocks to it. And we're going to go quickly power up this weapon. I really don't know why I ran all the way back here to this save point when there's a closer one, but whatever. And as I said, the sigils from Blitzball. If you don't know what you're doing in Blitzball, I will have, although if you're this far in the video, you probably figured it out yourself. Um, I will have a separate video explaining Blitzball and basics and how to abuse the AI and stuff like that. Uh, we now need we now need to go to Lake Makalania to power this up. Here we go. It's the closest save point you can teleport to. It's not the closest save point you can come from. Also, there's an air show going on, so there might. So I turn my head to look over there. There might be an instance where a jet flies by fairly fairly noisily. There's not a whole lot I can do about jets. I can't just like flag them down and give them a ticket or something. But either way, I could cut this bit out because I'm pretty sure I have video prior to this one where I show powering up a weapon. It's exactly the same in every instance. 
I think it was the Nirvana I showed, and that's the only one I've shown. Because I ended up getting the color bulb on a stream, come somewhat accidentally, to be fair. So now you'll you'll get to see what is what is this one called? I actually forgot what his weapon is. World champion makes sense. May as well put everyone's on. That way we can one shot bosses. Yay! The bosses at the end of the story are so weak compared to the monster arena stuff. If you've even done some of the monster arena stuff, even begun that, you'll just wreck the final bosses. Their stats are so low. Uh, but, you know. This is why you normally either complete the story first or have a backup save of when your characters are weaker so you can complete the story at the level it's meant to be. I do recommend you do that. If you're going to be doing Dark Aeons and stuff, and you know, you haven't done the story or just for funsies, uh, go ahead and just do the story right after you defeat Sin. Just go straight through and complete it. Or make a secondary save inside Sin. Because otherwise you're going to be like me and you're going to be able to one-shot bosses or two shot depending on how things go but so that's all the weapons go ahead and look at it there you go break damage a little bit triple overdrive double av and evade encounter not quite as good for evading and countering as the counted bold but it also has double ap so which at this point is kind of null and void because i've cleared the sphere grid but you know i don't really need a whole lot of ap at this point I probably will be using no encounter inside of Sin. Although, you are required to complete 30 battles in there. Just as a heads up, if we actually go that far in, I will explain how that works when we get there. So I'm going to go ahead and board Yield an Airship and do a save right here. My saves are multiplying again. I don't know why I have so many saves when they're all the same thing, but whatever. I do this constantly. Leave me alone. Hello. I know you are. Don't worry about it. Now, I really don't like the Inside of Sin. One, it's very dangerous, but two, the first part of Inside Sin, which I'm not actually going to fully explore. There's some decent items in there. We don't need them. If you need experience or items, do a full explore in that place. Just be aware that King Behemoths will kill you, so, you know, you can just run away from those, I suppose. Or use capture weapons. If you kill a cap- if you capture a King Behemoth, it will not use Meteor when it's defeated, because it's never actually defeated. I don't actually remember the way- oh, well, that's obviously not it. I don't actually remember the way to- get to where we need to go without hitting a dead end, which there are a lot of. You probably follow the sphere thing rings, whatever those are. So there's one dead end. Almost all of the dead ends will contain a chest. So if you want all the treasure, you're going to have to do a lot of looping around. There's another chest, another chest. There is a special sphere, which is pretty good. I'll come back later and get that. A Phantom Ring, Elixir, Wizard Lance, and a level 3 Key Sphere, which is that one that was in the top right of the view there. Oh, come on. This area is basically... whoops. This area is basically meant to grind you down a little bit, because the boss at the end of this area is not particularly hard. He can be if you're weak, uh, and you're not, at, you know, full fighting condition because of this area. Of course, there's that safe one up there, so I'm not entirely sure why you wouldn't be. How did I... How did I get over here? I am now confused and lost. Here we go. This is where I want to go, right? Yes. Ah! It doesn't help that the floor is really hard to see in this place. It's a maze that you can't see, but hey. It's a bunch of stabs. Staves, staffs, stews. Don't mind those. I'm also not going to use that save point because this fight's going to be really easy. Because of my stats. Although his magic will hit fairly hard, so. 
probably not super hard, but those rings are an important part of this fight, so I'll explain those when we get in. <laughs> Don't you ever give up? Sin has chosen me. I am part of Sin. I am one with Sin forever. Immortal. Sin just absorbed you. I will learn to control it from within. I have all the time in the world. Since you were gracious enough to dispose of Unaleska, the only means of destroying sin is forever gone. Now nothing can stop us. Well, we can. By all means, try. You should thank me. Your death means your father's life. So there you go. I think you get talk commands in this. I could be mistaken. If you do, I'm going to try and get them out. There's your hint, by the way. Those rotate. Oh, you don't get any. Those rotate, and if they're all matching, he is then weak to the opposite of that, I believe. Let me check. My thingle dangle. Yeah, he's, op he's weak to the opposite of the ones that match. He has 80,000 hit points, uh, which is less than we can do in one hit. And you might notice we're also really fast, so I'm tempted to just kind of... Let's swap some people who are weaker in. 13k. It's quite a bit weaker, to be fair. It's not super weak, but it is quite a bit weaker. And we can do some, some double cast, maybe. Uh, so he's going to be weak to Blizzaga. This is not a difficult fight, even if you're not really powerful. If you can defeat Sin, you can defeat this guy fairly easily. Do be aware that he does cast Ultima. Which, if your health is below, I think, like 3,000, it's very likely to kill you. I don't remember exactly what it does in terms of damage. Why don't I haste you? I want him to get more turns so we can show off, like, mechanics of his and stuff, but then we might just end up killing people in the party for no reason. No, oh, no, she absorbs that, I forgot. If you go into this fight with armor that nullifies or absorbs at least three elements, then you're pretty much golden. He'll do almost nothing to you. He does like triple casting, though, by the way. Also, good job, Titus. That was magic counter, if you're curious what the heck happened there. Hmm. Oh well. Uh, you need a ranged character to hit the top circular thing, I think they're called Sphere Morphs or whatever, uh, to change that one. Periodically heal hit one, so you do have to change them throughout the fight. Otherwise, basically just hit him. He only has 80,000, so if you can just hit him with power or armor break, you're golden. This song sounds way different than it did before. So, it is you, after all, who will send me. But even after I am gone, Spira's sorrow will prevail. Sin will be right behind you. So that's the first half of the area done, which is actually the better half of the area. Sadly. Let's go ahead and swap our standard overpowered team back in, and we need to take off Yuna's Peaceful Ring. Because you're gonna need to do fights in this area in order to open the pathway. And this area is full of a lot of enemies that are very, very dangerous. Not for us, mind you, but 
That enemy can cast stone on your entire party. There's King Behemoth in here. This is basically the Omega Ruins. So there's your, your gateway lock, basically. Um, having said that, there's just treasure in there. I'm curious. I'm gonna cast Auto Life on someone just in case. But I'm curious if his meteor will kill a party of this level, which is way above what we should be fighting him at, obviously. As long as you don't capture him, he does meteor. And you can only capture 10, so... Nope, it does basically nothing to us. Right. That can kill your party if you're not very powerful. If you had issues with the boss, I recommend you go grind somewhere that there aren't behemoths, because that'll probably kill you. The first gate requires 10 fiends, it has a level 4 key sphere. The second gate requires 20 fiends, and has defending brace, and these, uh, stack. It's basically 10, 10, 10, just they only open in order. Um, that's not what I meant to do, but apparently I'm casting auto life again. The third gate obviously requires 30, contains a mega elixir, which is not nearly as useful as it might sound at this point in the game. Also some decent bits and bobs for equipment in this area, if you still need equipment for some reason. Where's the other gate at? I think it's like... I think I've already passed it. There's the third gate. I think, I think we passed the other gate in that hallway somewhere, but... It's not exactly complicated, so it's fine. You can find the gate. It's basically just run around in there. It's trying to get you experience before you go into the final battles, because the final battles are fairly hard. It is definitely recommended that you at least get a few sphere levels in this area. Hello. I'm actually just gonna run from this. Primarily because I don't want to sit through the meteor thing again. This is a fairly short area, though. I believe you can get out of here fairly quickly. So we go down here, does that thing, and then we run this way. It's basically a one-way, I think, is what it's supposed to do. Not every enemy that spawns in the Omega Ruins will spawn here. Uh, for instance, the Malboro, which the Omega Ruins is famous for because they always ambush and they always open with bad breath, they don't spawn here, I'm pretty sure. Also, there's two red arrows there, because there's actually two ways into this place. Um, if you go over here, you can get the Leviathan, which is pretty good. And then there's a couple other ways you can go from that initial straight pathway I went, that involves basically platforming, uh, which also gives you a defense sphere, an HP sphere, and a four-on-one, which is a pretty good uh, uh, weapon for Waka. Although at this point, you know... It's kind of null and void, because this is basically the end, so... We're gonna go ahead and get everything out of the way, and then after this video we'll be all of like, the super bosses and etc, etc. I should have done this way earlier when I couldn't hit 99k on every enemy in the game, because, you know, it makes it kind of hard to show the fight when it's already dead. Now, there's a mini game that's coming up here, and I don't remember how it works. So let me. What does this say? I don't know. I think I'm supposed to avoid these. And, like, something will pop up that I'm supposed to grab, like that, and that'll give you items that will help you for the final fight, because there's nothing... There's nothing else. It's this and then the final fight, so... What is it? It's still blade. Not too much garbage. Got Helter Skelter, which is great. Ooh, is it you? Silence the step. It's not actually very good. To make this bit easier, I remembered what it what it technically is, but not what you're supposed to do. 
To make this bit easier, just stand in one spot and wait for the camera to rotate. Preferably somewhere towards the center, like about here. Just stand there and wait. If ice shows up underneath you, then move. If you see one of these, then grab it if you want. Those contain random items of a certain value and above, and they can contain basically any item, including weapons, armor, that skill sphere, which is probably utterly worthless to you at this point, because you probably don't have any sphere levels, so... White magic sphere could be useful, because you could teach someone else uh, Kiraga or regen or whatever. I think we have to get 10... Or maybe not 10, it just goes for a certain amount of time. I don't remember. Either way, you have to do this for a while, which is a little bit weird. Night Lance is actually pretty good if you don't need piercing on Kamari. Excuse me. Thank you, Harunting? I don't even know what a Harunting is, or who would use a Harunting. That sucks. You get into a battle if you get hit by them. Apparently, Malboros can spawn here. Great. And this is why everyone hates Malboros. The Malboro itself isn't dangerous. If it can, sh if it can hit Waka, that'll remove his confuse and he can leave. But the problem is he's. Probably not going to hit anyone. So we're probably going to die to poison here. Much to my dismay, as it were. Come on, hit someone. You're not going to hit anyone because our evasion is too freaking high. Hey, we live. That's the problem with the Marlboros, is they open with bad breath and it causes everything, and it's really risky, and you might die, basically. It's just triple Kiraga, it's fine. So let's not get hit again, and try to actually finish this area. I think every so many crystals, one will try to spawn underneath Titus. I don't think it's entirely random, but it could be. It's a really silly minigame kind of thing that I wish didn't happen, but it's required infinity. Also, be careful about walking into the camera. I showed basic utter disregard when I walk into the camera, but you can run into an ice spike doing that, which, you, you know, might kill you from Marlboro spawns. Can I get another one of these dingle dangles? So we can leave. That would be great. Hey, there's one. We get an attribute sphere, and then we do some sort of sweet backflip. This is your last chance to change equipment, heal, level up, whatever. This is the final chance you get, so if you need to do that, you should probably do that. Ha! <laughs> 
You got tall, but you're all bones. You eating right, boy? You've really grown. Yeah, but you're still bigger. <laughs> well, I am sin, you know. That's not funny. <laughs> well, then, I mean, you know, let's end this. Dad? Yeah. I hate you. you have to do yeah I I can't hear the hymn so well anymore pretty soon I'm gonna be sin completely I'm glad you're here now one thing though when it starts I won't be myself anymore. I won't be able to hold myself back. I'm sorry. That's enough! Let's finish this, okay? You're right. That music. Say hello to Braska's final Aeon. I promise this will be quick. Hit me with all you got, Dad. Hmm, I'm gonna artificially extend it if I can. This boss has two phases. The first phase has 60,000 HP. You might also know there are some pagodas on the side. Those are a recurring theme. However, um, someone has it, surely. You don't. Considering he doesn't, that probably means the only people that have it are Waka, Riku, and Titus. So that's not gonna happen. Um. There's a thing you can do here, you can... He's not immune to zombies, so you can hit him with zombie. Also, it's good if you have flare or ultimate in this fight instead of elemental stuff. But if you cast a zombie on him, the pagodas will hurt him because they constantly heal him. Or, well, cost, they cast curative magic on him constantly. So, with the help of zombie, this first phase is actually very easy. You might notice we have a trigger command. Don't use it. I'm... Purposefully using weaker party members, by the way. Uh, we're gonna power break right now. 
The reason you don't want to use the talk command yet is it only works a few times. Excuse me, and it reduces his overdrive gauge by a fair amount, actually. The first phase is obviously the easiest phase. The pagodas you can kill. It's actually recommended to kill one of them, so they don't do that. Because that seriously boosts up his um, overdrive gauge, you might have noticed. Basically, once he gets about a little over half, you're going to want to bring Titus in, and you're going to use his top command. I won't lose. That drastically decreases a lot of his stats, it also drastically decreases his overdrive gauge. Kamari, come get yourself killed or something, I don't know. The first phase, you're not going to really be doing much except for hitting him, and then I really should just kill a Bidoti. And then periodically talking to him. He doesn't do very much damage. You're going to want to keep your health high, though, for the second half, because in the second half, he stops caring. He then tries to very quickly kill you, and he has double the HP, so he's 120k. I don't know how many of the Pagodas have. Oh, can she not reach the Pagodas? That makes sense. You cannot kill the Pagodas, I should mention this. Uh, you can stop them, and then eventually they'll restart again. It's a big attack. There you go. That's the only real tricksy part in this. Uh, it causes stone. Other than that, the damage isn't very good. He will break the character, though. And once one of the Pagodas is down, the other one stops doing the buff thing, but it also starts doing that, which is actually kind of worse. So let's go ahead and get this into the second phase. That's basically it for the first phase. The second phase is somewhat of the same thing, except now he starts doing a lot of damage to multiple party members. You can tell because the jet symbol in the back is now on fire for some reason. And also he's sprouting a sword from his chest. Notice he keeps his overdrive gauge. If he gets the overdrive off, I do not believe it's an insta-kill. There is the big hitter, by the way. I don't believe it's an insta-kill, however, it is pretty dangerous. I'm actually going to bring Humphrey out to lower his overdrive gauge. It's likely to kill your whole, whole party. What I mean is, it's... Did it work? Did it? Darn it, it doesn't have a guaranteed chance to work. What I mean is, it's, uh... There it is. It's not a KO skill. It doesn't just insta white the party and ignore defense and all that. I believe it does a set amount of damage, but it's really likely to kill you, so. Um. Let's bring Waka back out. I can overdrive, but that'll kill the boss fairly easily. I want these other two to get a turn, but they're really slow. There they go. Uh, Lulu will probably die because she doesn't have very much health. She probably also can't solo a pagoda because she doesn't do that much damage. I really don't know how much health they have. Normally you don't worry about them. You get one of them down via an overdrive usually. Oh, she can solo it. And then you just ignore the other one, basically. Oh, he's sleeping. That's why he's not getting a turn. I just thought it was really slow for some reason. I wanted to use his other abilities, but he seems to be really un holy crap, unwilling to do so. It's left to go to Should have swapped him out for Riku, just so he doesn't die because he's going to. That's obviously the big hitter. If he gets, he can get that off multiple times in a row sometimes, that will wipe your party. 
If you have auto life, which you probably do at this point, you can utilize that. Let's... Should I finish it? Mm. I'll go ahead and explain. Once he gets down to 60k health, which is the original health he had, so do half, half damage, you're going to want to bring out Aeons or blow any overdrives that you have, because at that point he starts... He gets a little bit faster, he gets a little bit stronger, etc, etc. Basically, he gets get you now out Grand Summon Anima or Major Sisters or, you know, Bahamut if you don't have the other two, and just wreck him, essentially, is what you need to do at that point. Because if you let him go for too long, he will start wiping your party and the talk command will not work anymore to lower his overdrive, so you're kind of on an enraged timer, basically. First time I'm glad to have you as my father. <laughs> so, Jack, I should. No! Yuna! There's no time! You stay away! Yuna, you know what to do. The Aeons! We Aeons! Call them! Call us! Now, this bit's gonna be kinda long because we have every Aeon, although we are really powerful, but I wanna go ahead and split it here because it's already at 40 minutes and we've got a lot of cutscenes to go, so 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys for the finale of the story, which is the next video. Thanks for watching, I'll see you then.